90% of the rhino horn that's poached in Africa ends up in Vietnam. What I wanted to do is come here and try and understand what's going on with that statistic. There's this great saying, the world suffers a lot, not because of the violence of bad people, but because of the silence of good people. It's very, very depressing when uh, you learn just how endangered they really, really are. Um, I was very, very lucky back in 2007. Um, I was lucky to go across to Lewa, the Wildlife Conservancy, oh, wow, yeah. over in Kenya. Um, and near our camp, in a neighbouring bit of... Uh, it's not really a field in Africa, is it? You know, a bit of a savanna. Lane, uh, yes, yes, it's lame. That lane. sounds better. Okay. And we had a, sort of a resident rhino that would just sort of walk backwards and forwards with this wonderful majesty. And wow. they are incredible yeah. animals. Yeah, yeah. You know, they are the modern-day triceratops. And you, mm. you think, how can poachers hunt these creatures down? How can they have so, no regard at all yeah. for how endangered they are? And just think of money on ideas which are just a fallacy anyway, all, all to do yeah. with rhino horn and this nonsense. It's interesting you said that about money, because when me and Paul were in Vietnam, well, we went undercover uh, to this, this village, we went on undercover James Bond-style missions. So it was very, very cool. Did it feel risky, but it, did it feel... It, was, uh, yes. it was a bit nerve-wracking. I can go back and say, yeah, it was so cool, I was like James <laughs> Bond, but at the time, yes, it yes. was uh, very, very scary. Indeed. You don't want people finding out what Really no, exactly. Going on, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. They they were selling horn there. It was it was almost like drug dealing. And yeah, it was like forty thousand dollars a kilo or something. Rhino horn has become this enormously valuable thing, just based on utter nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very encouraged seeing the um, the rangers oh. over in uh, in in Kenya, and they've got such a good system of tracking down the poachers and knowing where they are and getting them and they have a lot of success yeah, yeah. and it was very inspiring to meet them with it they're almost military yeah yeah it's like a war isn't yeah it? exactly it is a war mm -hmm. it is a war mm -hmm. surprising just how many people really do uh, mm -hmm. support a cause yeah. like um, say the rhino many people feel the same and i, I was sitting next to terry Waite. Who is an amazing fellow, very tall fellow. I think he's about seven foot ten, and you can hear the depth. Uh, his voice has that that cavernous sound, you know. And he was very. Um, it is appalling the things that go on. Absolutely appalling. Do you feel um, being in the position you are with the following that you have that that you have more of an opportunity to raise awareness on on issues like? Yes, I, th I think so. I think if you if you can pitch in and mm. and help in some way. Uh, then I think you should. Yeah. One thing that was sort of the cornerstone of our project was uh, um, Paul and Aaron Ramsey, the Arsenal footballer, launched this T-shirt campaign, and it was it was all about getting social media, not get you know Matt Smith or Chris Hemsworth to wear the T-shirt or hold up the T-shirt, and you know it creates it's just getting it out there, and like you said earlier about uh, raising awareness on the issue. So how do do you feel like there's a there's a certain way we should go about? Um, trying to educate people about issues like this. I think you've just got to keep keep talking about yeah. it, haven't you? Just keep, uh, you know, thankfully everyone has a platform now via yeah. Twitter and such similar things. You've just got to keep on it and not yeah. stop. David Attenborough as well, he's a wonderful uh, advocate. Yes. You know, he, I mean, he's the, the greatest example of when somebody speaks and others listen yeah, yeah. and believe and trust. Or listen to everything yes. he says. Don't you? If we don't share the planet that we occupy <laughs> with the creatures who live alongside us, then that is very selfish of us indeed, and it will be so at our peril. And that people really brilliant. pay attention to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so oh, that impression's throwing me up what I was going to ask now. <laughs> that was brilliant. I've, I've always been uh, a big fan of, of your impressions. Oh. Um, oh, right back at you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I haven't been doing impressions for very long. Um, and I was wondering, do you have a method for if you're, if you're wanting to develop a new impression of someone? I think that the first thing is to um, just download a YouTube clip mm. and just watch it over and over yeah. and over. Just to get those nuances, mm. idiosyncrasies, foibles, just imprint them onto yeah. the brain. Mm. If I look at that light just up there now that's illuminating us and turn away, <laughs> I can still see it. Yeah. And I think it's a similar thing with sounds. Mm. If you listen to something yeah. sufficiently, it sticks on your subconscious. Yes. Uh, so you can just replay it. 
Absolutely. through your voice, yeah. you know. Um, it's so much easier now with um, tablets and being able to download a clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I need to, I need a notebook. I need some some notes from the, from the master here. It's it's oh, interesting oh, oh, actually yeah. because the the first uh, the first video I ever did was the Matt Smith impression. Brilliant. Was it? That is fantastic. That's a real. Did you get that, guys? Did you get really that? Is. Did you did you get that? It really is. John Coulter just so had an impression of us. Spookily fantastic. Really, That's I spooked him. him out with it once. <laughs> um, could you do um, something I've been asked? Uh, I've been wondering whether you could do for a very long time. Uh, probably the most difficult impression of your career. Can you do an impression of a rhino? A rhino. <laughs> Let me see. Do you speak rhino? To... Do you? I'm trying to remember the way that rhino sounded in Kenya. I've never been asked this before. Yeah. I've turned into Alan Bennett while I try and work it out. An impression of a rhino. Big lungs. They'd probably be quite cross if they made a noise. Probably just before a charge or something like that. Let me see. Yes, Alan Bennett to a rhinoceros. The greatest impersonation contrast I think I've ever known. <laughs> So I think that was a Brachiosaurus. It's <laughs> amazing. I wasn't That's expecting amazing. that question. But that oh, yeah, yeah. I, wasn't, I don't think I was expecting that question. Uh, so talking about educating people on the rhino poaching crisis, I know that in, in the 80s in Japan, uh, this taboo was, was sort of uh, stimulated and then rhino poaching sort of dropped dramatically. It's encouraging that that can be achieved. Yeah. You know, we've seen it in the past. Mm -hmm. That's just got to be applied. You know, the, the idea that rhino horn is valuable anywhere else other than on a rhino's head. I mean, it's only fingernail, yeah. basically, isn't it? It is, it has Just keratin. Yeah. Matted hair. It's, mm. That's all it is. It doesn't have any power. The, the amazing thing for me is that it's it's valued at twice, it's, it's, it's worth more than twice its weight in gold. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's, it is depressing. You know, you could have, yes, it, it really is depressing, and I, I, I just hope that that perception can be steered far, far away from. Thank you very much, John. Thank, Thank you, you for Jake. coming. All the best, a great pleasure. Would you like to do an outro high five? I'm just wondering who to do it as. Ooh. Who do you think? Not as the rhino. <laughs> um. Let's see. An outro high five. At the speed at which Titan orbits Saturn. <laughs>